Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Perfect. Hope you're doing well, Nathan. I just wanted to ask, you've been on this organization for around three years on PFL. Uh, what does PFL has as an organization that makes you happy and comfortable enough to make it your home? Ah, PFL is great, you know, great organization. The, I talked to Ray. Ray is very, very good, very good people. And PFL, I, I love, I love fight PFL because he's, he's given me an opportunity a long time ago and uh, to be a champion, you know, and I'm champion <laughs> the last two seasons. And PFL for me is the great organization because I have opportunity uh, to win uh, $1 million. This is a lot of money, you know. Awesome. And besides that, uh, what's been the most difficult part of preparing for this fight in the middle of a pandemic? I mean, technically things are getting better, but many things are not the same as they used to be before. So to you as a fighter and as a human, what, what are the principal challenge, challenges you face uh, preparing for this fight? Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh uh keeping keep training hard uh since my last fight you know because this this my last fight i i don't like this my 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 last fight but uh i mean training very hard you know training hard for for this fight perfect man how are you great how are you doing Everything good here, sir. Thank you for your time. I wanted to ask you, my first question is uh, regarding you've been, uh, you had already had one fight on PFL as well as your opponent. How's been your experience so far with the company? Uh, my experience with PFL has been really good. Uh, super professional organization, something that I have wanted to be a part of for a long time. Something that drew me to PFL with the exception of the money, obviously was that I feel like it's an organization that's coming up on the rise and I really like the season format. Uh, that's been my biggest complaint with the sport overall is that I never really knew what was around the bend. So planning life has been kind of tough, but now I know exactly when I'm fighting uh, before the season even starts. So that's really great for being able to plan things out in life. And uh, yeah, I just really enjoy everything about this organization to be honest. Awesome. And what are your thoughts on your opponent, on Brendan? Oh, my thoughts on him? Uh, I think he's super tough. He's a great striker. Um, I think he brings the fight every single time. Uh, he seems super popular. And uh, I think I might be the underdog in this fight, according to, to people. But, uh, man, I'm the favorite in my mind. So, um, yeah, I'm just super excited to get in there. I knew that him and I were going to cross paths at some point, whether it was the finals or the playoffs or whatever, but it's going to be this regular second regular season fight. And that's fine with me. Awesome. Thank you. And good luck on Thursday. Thank you. Hey, Clay, how are you? I'm doing well, man. Thank you for asking. Awesome, brother. Uh, I wanted to ask you, how's been your experience with PLFL so far? You all, you have one fight with them before in which you defeated Anthony Pettis. Now you're heading into the second fight as an organization. What's your opinion on, on the company? Um, um, the PFL has been amazing, you know, um, they, they handle everything professionally, which, uh, is what you're looking for, especially when you've been in, I've been all over in little rinky dink shows, boxing and everywhere else. And it's nice to have a professional atmosphere. So, um, yeah, they've been, the PFL has been amazing. Awesome. And what can we expect from you on Thursday? Uh, Thursday night, man, I'm just going to go out and do my thing like I always do. You know, uh, it's just another day in the office for me. I'm, I, I, I got to solidify my spot in the tournament, you know, so, um, I'm, I'm going to be looking, lo looking to get the finish. Obviously. Um, I don't want somebody sneaking up, getting a first round knockout, still in my spot, <laughs> even though I beat them, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, we're, we're looking for the finish Thursday night for sure. Thank you. And good luck on Thursday. Thank you. Hey, Lance, how are you? Good. How's it going? Everything good, brother. Uh, 
following up a little bit on what you've been talking about, I mean, you unfortunately had your first uh, defeat after 11 straight wins. Uh, and you've been, you know, pointing the mental situation that the quarantine, the pandemic and the whole, you know, business uh, did to this last fight. How do you manage to put yourself back on track physically, mentally and spiritually for this fight? I think I did that one by just going home and getting my mind right after that last fight. Um, really, I it was a situation of where sometimes I dwell on my losses because I made a mistake or I did something wrong or uh, leading up to the fight, there were some things I didn't do right. But this last fight was for me, I was able to move forward from it pretty easily. And I felt that um, just not being there mentally and knowing that I wasn't there, that was really all I needed to make an improvement on. Um, sometimes when we talk as fighters, one to another it's more of like flipping the switch like if you're gonna go in the back room and get warmed up for a fight you gotta flip that switch before you go in there because as fighters and professional athletes we don't just walk around all day just ready to fight people and it's something that's turned on it's a competitive mindset and i didn't flip that switch on that night and it was mainly just all the things that you explained with, you know, the quarantine and being alone for 17 days and doing this and that. And, you know, you could name a list of excuses, but it's not really, it doesn't matter. The loss still goes on the record. Um, moving forward from it was just going home and being able to relax and sleep in my own bed and, and hang out and, and be with my family and uh, enjoy the things that I like to do, you know, drive my cars and, mess around outside with the dogs and mow my own lawn, you know, everyday things that, that I like to do as a person. There's nothing that, nothing crazy about it. I didn't need to get a, you know, a hypnotherapist or anything insane. I mean, it's, it's a loss. I've had a loss before. I've had many losses in my life. Um, it's just moving forward mentally and having the right mindset coming into here. And um, obviously with having my uh, friend, teammate, partner, Juan Archuleta here for these these 12 days, it, it makes a huge difference. Uh, it takes a lot of the burden of the things that I did myself on the last 17-day quarantine of things that he's able to do for me and things that we can do together during this 12-day quarantine to really make the difference for the, you know, for the improvements for this fight. And uh, obviously, as a performer, it will be huge. But, you know, mentioning uh, the mental situation in the previous side, as a human being, for, for Lance Palmer, the human, how important is to get that W on Thursday? Uh, to get the W, that's, you know, that's really the only reason I'm here is to get the win. And regardless of what happens with the playoff points and the things of that nature, I mean, you really can't control when you get the finish i mean you can try and say i'm going to go all out and i'm going to try and get a first round finish and get six points get in the playoffs but if that doesn't happen i still want my win i still want to go out there get that win get those two checks and you know be able to go home to my family and uh a win's a win so regardless whether i get the finish in the first and continue with pfl through the playoffs or i just get the win and i don't make the playoffs with pfl You know, we'll see what other options are out there, or, you know, see see what's next. I don't know. But right now my focus is on Thursday night and, um, you know, going out there and just performing, making myself aware. The only person I got to prove to is myself that, that I'm still on top and I got to go do that on Thursday. Awesome. Thank you very much and good luck on Thursday. Thanks, man. Hola, Alex. ¿Cómo está? Hola, ¿cómo está? Estoy muy bien, gracias. Qué bueno, hermano. Eh, te pregunto... Paraguay no es un país muy conocido por lo que es artes marciales mixtas, lucha, boxeo, etcétera, etcétera. Y tengo esa curiosidad, ¿cómo comenzó tu pasión por la industria de la MMA y cómo logras entonces manejar, eh, ingresar a esta industria viviendo toda tu vida allá? Ah, claro, uh, Paraguay es un país muy pequeño uh, y también la gente son muy humilde, entonces los deportes normalmente no suelen ser muy grandes, no sé qué sea soccer, el fútbol. Um, yo cuando tenía, cuando, cuando yo he nacido, yo ya nací en una familia de arte marcialista, o sea, mi padre era cinturón negro de taekwondo, entonces él, se, él trajo a la familia en Canadá, y cuando yo tenía más o menos 14 años, vinimos en Canadá, 
Y ahí comenzó, mi eh, comenzó más mi pasión por las artes marciales, más o menos. Más por, siempre taekwondo, o sea, era muy competitivo en la parte de taekwondo. Cuando tuve 17, uh, pasando 18, quería ser profesional en kickboxing. Entonces comencé a seguir más o menos um, gimnasios que tenían kickboxing para comenzar a seguir una carrera profesional. Y luego decidí... Eh, vi en un costado que estaban practicando las MMA y medio que miré y me enamoré un poquito del deporte y luego vi un video de Anderson Silva que mostraba sus highlights y me encantó, entonces desde ahí quería probarlo, lo probé, mi padre saltó conmigo y, y desde ahí toda historia, comenzamos a pelear y ahora estamos aquí. Y excelente, y mi última pregunta, eh, pura victoria sobre Anthony, Anthony Petty sería enorme para tu récord, pero sería más grande todavía para Paraguay. Eh, ¿Cuán importante sería tú llevarte esa victoria y ondear la bandera de Paraguay al final de la noche del jueves? Um, todas las victorias victoria son importantes para mí y para mi nación. O sea que en contra de qué no importa. Claro, ahora estamos hablando con un hombre muy grande. Uh, el nombre de Anthony Pérez, eh, todo el mundo lo escucha. Cuando alguien me pregunta contra quién peleas, yo le digo el nombre y todos ya saben con quién estoy peleando. O sea que eso es algo muy, ¿cómo se dice? Uh, que me da mucho honor. O sea que voy a saltar ahora a pelear. Y también uh, conseguir una victoria sería algo muy grande para, para mí, para la nación. Pero yo sé que se puede, así que vamos a ir con todo. Excelente, hermano. Muchas gracias por tu tiempo y mucho éxito el jueves. Muchas gracias, hermano. Hey, Bobo, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm looking good, feeling good. How are you? Everything good here in Puerto Rico, man. Thank you for your time. Uh, I was... oh, hold on. That's such a jealous. Yeah, that's a hard flex. Oh, I'm just hanging out in Puerto Rico while you're in cold ass New Jersey in a bubble. It's okay, though. It's all okay. <laughs> well, after you win $1 million, you can come to Puerto Rico and enjoy the warm beaches here. So that, you that's invite a me and I'm there, bro. You invite me and I'm there. You got it, bro. Uh, I wanted to ask you, you entered to your first PFL fight, not being the favorite, but you did tell everyone that you were going to win. And you did exactly that. You defeated the champion in your first fight. What was the first thing that went through your mind when your name was announced as the winner for that night? One down, three to go. That's all I thought about. Um, and it wasn't a significant, oh, one down, the champ's down. It was one down, three to go in my mind. Maybe four to go. I don't know if they sent the format. All I know is one down, couple more to go. <laughs> Um, I'm excited about the matchups that they have in front of me. You know, I have some of the best guys in my corner. Um, I, I think my sparring sessions are harder than some of the guys in the tournament. And I, I'm, I'm at the top of the, I'm at the cream, of, I'm the cream of the crop. You know, I feel like I'm at the top. I feel like some of those guys that took L's will never see me again. I feel like some of those guys who, who won will, will never be on my level. Um, there are a few that I got my eye on, but for the most part, it's me versus the world. Awesome. And man, the charisma, the swag, the personality, everything. It reminds me a few things of the pro wrestling elements or Muhammad Ali in, in his boxing years. Uh, what inspired I'm a bad man. I like that you said that. That's the Muhammad Ali feeling I'm looking for. Not that I'm imitating anybody. If you, if you really know me, you know I've been this way my whole life. You know, cameras on, cameras off. Whether we're watching the Mayweather fight last night and I'm chilling in the corner making everybody laugh. It is what it is. That's who I am. Um, but the fact that you, you, you're, you're seeing that entertainment side of me. We've, so many of these fighters forget that like, you got to put fans in the stands. You, you, know, you got to be what they want to see you got to be the guy that either everyone wants to watch get knocked out or everyone wants you knock somebody out and i strongly live by the fact that i'm i'm an entertainer first you know yeah i'm a fighter at heart i was born a warrior but when i start speaking people listen period when i start moving people groove with me period that was actually my question how important for you it's to add the entertainment side into the mma industry specifically to your division It's important. Um, you got to be the whole package. There are very few guys that are at the top of the things that they do that hasn't figured out a way to become a well-rounded person in their craft, in their passion. And I'm, I'm passionate about my fighting career. Um, they say you start getting real comfortable in the game. You start understanding the game. I'm, 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 I'm handling the game like my thumbs are bruised because I'm the type of guy that puts my personality in what I'm doing. And you can see that once I'm comfortable, once I can handle the game like I, like I know what I'm doing, my personality just comes out. And 
that's that's hard to that's hard to stipend. Awesome, brother. Well, good luck on Thursday, and let's hope to see you in Puerto Rico soon. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Hey, Anthony, how are you? How are you? I'm good, man. How you doing? Everything good here, sir. Uh, you started training when you were five years old, boxing and, and taekwondo, among multiple other things. You've been active as a pro for 14 plus years. Uh, how do you manage to, you know, keep fueling that fire and keep doing this for many, many years, even though you barely, you know, you've accomplished so many things in your career so far? Yeah, I think changing the format this year, like this year has been a fun year for me, honestly, like losing that first fight put me in a position where I had to like look at everything and start making decisions on you know, where I, what I want to train on and, and what I'm going to focus on. So I think changing the format, keeping it fresh, keeping it fun um, definitely helps. Perfect. And obviously the million dollars motivates everyone, but for your legacy as a fighter, how important for you is to take the championship home? Yeah, I mean, if my little brother winning that belt, man, imagine you know two brothers in the same year winning belts. So that's that's my motivation right there too. It added to it, man. So I was already you know motivated to get that belt. I had a, a rough first fight. Um, I didn't make the adjustments I needed to make, so I'm blessed to be in this position to go out there and do it again. Awesome. Thank you very much, and good luck on Thursday. Thanks, bro. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much for your time and for the opportunity. My question is for Clarissa. Uh, what's the most challenging part of doing that transition from the boxing industry to MMA? Um, of course, the most difficult part for me is just, like I said, it's, it's the ground art, you know, as far as in like, it, it's at the beginning when you first start learning to just, you just be laying there on your back and you like, what am I doing? And it's like, it's kind of foreign to boxing because we're standing up um, and our legs is, Yeah, we use our legs, but it's more of everything is really upper body and punches. But then um, jujitsu is like a smaller person can use technique to be a bigger, stronger person, right? So it's more of like a like a defense mechanism almost. It's like they can get into a shell and but they can still be able to get you in like a weird position or whatever. So um, jujitsu was was one of the ones that um, I struggled with at the beginning. And um, just the biggest part of MMA, which is the hardest to me in all, is just putting everything together. You know what I mean? Like, you go from boxing to to wrestling to now you have to either do jiu-jitsu or defend jiu-jitsu or, you know, just being on the ground and, you know, coming up. Like, when you got to put all those different mindsets together, um, up at first, it can be very, very challenging, especially for a boxer, right? So the wrestling came to me easy. Um, the wrestling came to me very, very easy, and wrestling kind of can sometimes offset jujitsu. So, um, we kind of mixed all that in and tried to get my mind ready to one go fight five minutes and then be able to think the whole five minutes and transition to whatever we got to transition to, uh, in a uh, in a uh, sparring. So that was the biggest part at first, but after doing it, you know, for about five months it's like okay now i understand it i get it and uh it makes a lot of sense to me but at first everything besides boxing was hard <laughs> awesome thank you very much and good luck to both of you on on, on thursday thanks